And we're back with some more RimWorld. And today we're going to knock out lots and lots of good stuff. We're going to get out high mech tech, ultra mech tech, and we're going to turn our mechinator into, oh, well, we're going to get them an army of scythers. That's the main goal for today. At the same time, once we've got that tech knocked out, I want to backfill here, was it long blades? We need to get ourselves a good weapon for Lunk's protege, Papersil. And we can't get them a, a super blade just yet, but we want to give them a good weapon that can, you know, delim people, just like their old man, as soon as possible. Well, we're doing our best to get our, our little pawns armed up and good to kill. Uh, we're sending our trader, Smokey, all the way down here. And, oh, we're going to have to get rid of Peter as well. Peter keeps getting confused and their dementia is starting to get to them, which is a problem. Oh. Damn it, who started so... You two had social fights again. Please tell me no one lost a limb. Okay. Okay, that's good. Uh, you still got your arm. It was close. And you... You still got your neck. And you got a bite. Okay, then. It's just too dangerous to... The, it, these kids, if they start fighting and one of them involves Papersil, we're in so much trouble. The reason being... Uh, they've got strong melee, which means they do 50% more damage per hit. Also, they're aggressive, so they're far more likely to end up getting into social fights. It seems that is a bad mix for children. It just results in a lot of delimmings. Our trading down here has turned out to be very mediocre so far. I mean, we came a long way and there's three places, so hopefully they've got some half-decent genes. Uh, we picked up Optimist at the first place. Unfortunately, it's tied to su heat super tolerant, but whatever. Uh, bushy super immunity and only bushy beards. Right. You know what? We'll take the water skip and we'll sell off a duster. Thank you kindly. Now let's see what this last place has in store for us. Hopefully, just give us a good gene or two. We just want either awful at something or great at something. Something to, to get our gene manipulation a little bit up. While waiting for our trading to go through, a hunter named Rory has arrived and wants to join the colony. Well, won't we'll leave without causing us problems, eh? I think I can find a solution to this one. Rory here is not the best or worst colonists I've seen. Uh, they're sickly, which, uh, no, I'm not dealing with that. And they're a nudist, so actually, they're, they're pretty terrible. I wouldn't keep them one way there. Or what we can do is, uh, I'll just shoot Ryan there with this thing. If we keep an eye up here. Yeah, it looks like they haven't patched that. Looks like this is a guilty colonist. You know what that means. Uh, I'm going to need someone to arrest them. Chewie, get over here. This guilty, guilty, guilty person needs to be taken to prison and immediately executed for their crimes against humanity. And everyone should get a nice mood boost out of this while we're at it. Uh, in fact, who needs this more than anyone else? Ooh, actually, Lunk, you could probably do with it. In fact, in fact, Lunk could probably do with a little bit of a blood top up and then... Actually, you know what? Why don't you just blood feed off them twice? There you go. And then I want you to capture them. And then I want you to execute them. And this might even give us a development point. Wait, did I set that to execute? Yep. There was no actual feedback. Prioritize executing. Boom. Death. We gain a development point. And socially speaking, Lunk should now be more popular with everyone. Let's try Stalker their X. Stalker their X when it comes to Lunk. They executed the prisoners so they got a plus 20. How does that work, actually, on Smokey? Oh, Smokey's on the map. We'll find out when Smokey gets back. Well, the good news keeps on rolling in. If it isn't just mood beacons, mood boosters walking in off the edge of the map, it's... Uh, we went down here and we decided to go all the way to the edge of the map, namely because uh, what we'd got had been pretty weak sauce, but what we down, found down here was not so weak sauce. There's a gene pack of Archite Metabolic. Now, I had no idea what this was at first, but I think I finally figured it out. I thought this was some sort of stomach thing... No, what it is, is it just, it reduces complexity on your pawn. So if you install this into your pawn, it reduces their complexity, meaning you can pile on more good stuff onto them without actually causing them any negatives when it comes to uh, metabolic efficiency. So as far as I can tell, this thing gives you the archite metabolism, which costs you archite capsules to install, increases the complexity you can add to your, or uh, the metabolic efficiency by six. However, it's also bundled with another gene, which is, where is it, fire resistant? So fire resistant gives it a minus two. So we're, you come out four points ahead or in the green if you install this. Unfortunately, everyone will also have pig noses, but you know, um, it just means there's going to be a lot of pig loving going on. Otherwise, the no pig, the non pig nose romance chances are going to go way down. We have to buy it. It's 2600. We can't afford not to buy that. That just seems amazing. Um, no, I'm not going to buy the archive capsules while, I'm, while we're here. Those archive capsules are everywhere. Everywhere we stop pretty much has those, so I'm not really worried just yet. Also, we can grab a social trainer while we're here. That pretty much spends all the drugs and money we brought with us. We are now 
just broke. Horrifically broke. And I think we're just going to fire skip back home because otherwise the journey is way too... F wow, okay, that was quick. I didn't even unpause it. That's uh, kind of impressive. Good job, Smokey. Uh, you want to maybe grab those? You know what? Let's just unload them here. I don't think it really matters. We've got water skip, wall rays, a doomsday rocket launcher. We also picked up a skill trainer for social and those two genes. Or actually, I'm pretty sure there's a third one around here somewhere. Ah, there we go. This, this was a good haul. Now get those into storage immediately. Now that we're getting serious about genes, I've installed a little mod to help us out. Namely, auto extract genes by Nibato. Oh, and we've been a longsword. Uh, was that a good longsword? Oh, 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 yes. Uh, Timothy. Put it down. Put it down. Where, where did the longsword go? Who's got it? I want to see that longsword. Did I miss the memo on legendary plastic longswords? This thing is incredible. 41.7 damage for the edge and the point and 13.4. Like this thing on its own in a normal bone will one shot humans to the torso. It just insta gives them. With the melee bonus we're getting, that's going to be 60 points of damage. That's just going to crush any torso. I'm pretty sure this is better than what uh, Lunk's already equipped with. Oh, uh, Lunk's taking a bit of a nap at the moment. They're, they're going through their death rest period. This should be their last basic death rest, though. What is the melee damage on this? Wow. Okay, so the legendary sword does not attack as fast and doesn't have as much armor penetration. That's 40.5, 40.5, and 1.6. So this thing is measuring up almost to be the same as a Permona, uh, Persona Mono Sword. Just a... Uh, Slightly slower attack values. Uh, where's uh, Pepper Silly? Where are you, buddy? Okay, you're over there doing some nature running around the corpses. Uh, yeah, you enjoy yourself. Once you're done with that, I'm going to want you to get back over here. And we're going to give you a nice sword. Where'd the sword go? I, f I found the sword. Yeah, it turns out uh, I had a bill set up to destroy all of those melee weapons. The pesky ones that the tribals were dropping. God damn. Damn it. Anyway, while we try and roll another Masterwork Plasteel Sword, um, we'll move on to Panoxacillin production. Yes, we, we got that knocked out of the way with now, so that means we can now produce those drugs to hopefully stop us getting malaria in the future. Ah, damn it. Mm. Alright, so, next up. I would like hospital beds, but we'll grab sterile material first because you need that for hospital beds. Then after that we might get, where is it, uh, gene processing. Um... Yeah, there's a few genetic traits we would like to blend onto our colonists. Oh, and one thing. Smokey here, for example, their gene line traits, as is the one to pass on to their kids, are not the vampire ones. It's the ones above them up here. They're their germline ones. So even if we do splice on genes to say stalker here, their kids won't get them. They'll just be put on as exogenes from all of these gene banks. So it's not going to contaminate the children, or actually should I say improve the children going forward. Quest available shelter for an aristocrat. This sounds boring. Um, host him for 12 days, is suffering for paralytic abrasia, and must be kept in bed. Um, sure, I'm, I, I, I'll just put you down a wooden bed, and hopefully you're not going to complain too much. And if you complain too much, we won't care. Well, nothing like a little bit of a too deep infestation to remind you there's always a few ch problems around the corner. We're going to bring everyone in this, even the kids. The kids have got most of their uh, learning done for the day, so they shouldn't bother them or slow them down that much. Where are you going? You know what, you can go that way. We should be able to kill the lot. Come on. Oh, actually, our rifle range is huge. Let's just go back a little bit further, maybe. Oh, wow, that is a lot. Uh, Smokey, where are you? And let's try some burdens, shall we? Oh, wow, you are heavily drained. Yeah, we'll hit that. Uh, good burden there. Good burden there. And let's try a burden there. Oh, you... Focus that one down if you wouldn't mind. Damn. I probably should have been more careful. We can't work all these, can we? No, no, that would be too convenient. I'm pretty sure the animals are on the same side anyway. Wow. Lindsay, pull back. This was dumb. Hmm. Hmm. You, insanity that one. Rest of you... Lindsay, pull back. The rest of you keep fighting, shooting the way you're shooting. Yeah, I say we run. Can we run? 3.7, 3.7 now. We're in the open. Hmm. Hmm. 
Let me think for a second. Okay, let's fire it up a bit. There we go. Nice. Damn it. I was... I aimed you forward instead of at the enemy so that you'd cause a nice fire break for us. Hmm. Well, anyway, you need to get skipped. Okay, Muppet, pull back. Lindsay, you're fine where you are. Ryan can tank this. Sorry, but uh, I'm not letting the kids get any hurt. Any more hurt than they need to be. Whew. Right. Now, all of you. Let's get some focus fire on. That's better. Whew. Perfect. This was incredibly sloppy. I really didn't... I... Uh, no excuses. Hey, you. Kill that. Now, all of you kill that. Done. Next. Oof. Yeah, no, keep firing, I think. Uh, Smokey, you got one more skip in the tank? Yes, you do. Done. And that should be the end of it. Ryan's going to need some TLC. Uh, Muppet's going to need a little bit of help. And um, yeah. Yeah, that should be fine. We'll just wipe out the last one and be done with it. That was too messy. Uh, I, I keep thinking this crowd is better than they really are so far. Sloppy. All right, back to work. We are not going to let that insect meat go to waste. We're going to chop it up right here and turn it right into chem fuel. That uh, chem fuel we can turn into weapons and all sorts of things later on. Ooh, which reminds me, there's a few things we should probably research. Uh, what is the Jubilee of Flesh opportunity? Uh, Mosquites? Okay, that's not one of our religions. I'm going to presume that's Nosbos here. Uh, he's a cooperative. You know what? Who cares? There's there's so many random religions floating around here at the moment. To uh, help our power along, we're going to install a couple more Toxifier generators in here. Uh, then, as well as that, we're going to start phasing out these chem fuel power generators. We don't really need them. These are just more efficient, they don't require the milking, and the chem fuel we can use for other stuff. And Kauger, I can't believe you actually completed that successfully. Construction level 5 at the age of 12. Respect. Okay then. Um, good job. What's your learning at? 90% for that. Yeah, you should go and, uh, you know, play or something? Now, we had some rare thrombos show up. The problem was, they didn't show up on our tile. They showed up on the pollution tile we're having fun on, which is kind of annoying. But that's okay, they're around here somewhere. And we sent over someone to collect them. Uh, Smokey. Yeah, we also sent them over with some carry capacity, otherwise they would never get them back. But in fact, we're going to have to make a uh, caravan hitching post somewhere. Yeah, and get all the animals rounded up. Looks like Randy wants us to name this tile. I have the perfect name from the comments. This place is somebody else's problem. Excellent. Alright, Smokey, you got them sorted? Nice. Okay, you've got an Insanity Lance, and we've got a couple of Thrombos that are going to beat the snot out of each other. All you have to do is get close enough, zap one of them, let the two of them fight it out, and then whichever one's left alive, we uh, go in and take care of that one. Oh, damn it. Which one has hearing problems? Uh, I think I'm going to nab the hearing loss one first. The thing is, the hearing loss one... Ah, there you go. Oop, 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 oop. Damn it, they're on fire. Well... That's a problem. Just get in the water. Get in the water! Well, this went badly wrong. On the bright side, they might just burn down. Uh... There we go. Now they've gone... They're attacking a rat. Excellent. Now they're attacking another thrombo. And they just have to damage the other one enough that we can take it down the last of the way. Its health is 92. Health is 98, 99. Yep. Hey, whichever one's left over, they're ours. Well, I was really hoping it would be the other one. Okay, but what's your speed? 1.82. Perfect. Oh, yeah, Smokey's uh, got pig vision. Well, that's not going to help. We can still kite them. It's just going to be a lot of running. Or we could just kite them. Not at all. Never mind. Okay, let's finish these both off and then form ourselves a caravan. So, how are we going to get corpses that large back without chopping them up first? Well, I am glad you asked. Uh, we bought a tunneler with us. They have a carry capacity of 123 kilos. 
That means them, actually, I was hoping we could carry both of them, but it turns out these things are 240 kilos apiece. We can barely just carry one corpse. Um, well, that's, that's as good as it gets, I'm afraid. Uh, unfortunate, but uh, you must assign at least one. Uh, yep, yep, fine, we'll get Smokey on that. Whoops. Done. Um, Smokey will pick up all the goods and... Oh, um, where are you going, Smokey? Don't hang up. Yep, that was uh, real smart, buddy. Real smart. Uh, so, equipped with one death thrombo in their inventory, they're going to... What's fire? Lightning strikes. Okay, time to expand the home zone here to include our new power generation as well. And maybe that. Smokey should be able to grab it. Where are you going? Consuming fine meal. God damn it. Well, this was a horrific mess. We ended up launching over a butcher's table just so that we could chop these up first. It seems they wouldn't carry the whole corpse. I presume you needed someone who was capable of carrying the whole thing as opposed to just, you know, splitting it up between all the animals. Also, I think Smokey may have nibbled down on one of the thrombos. Uh, it was an accident. Not my fault, I swear. Maybe we'll chop this stuff up. We can at least bring the thrombo fur back. I want a few dusters out of that. That stuff is very valuable. Uh, no, no, no. Don't be eating the meat raw. Damn it. This guy's a savage. Well, that's some terrible timing on my part. Uh, I may have messed up slightly here. You see, well, I sent you back out on a trade mission. Now, the reason I sent you back instead of Smokey was, well, Smokey's currently doing a death rest. And at the same time, I decided to give Lunk a bionic leg. So now Lunk's got two bionic legs and we've got a whole bunch of polar bears. So we got 12 polar bears. Reminds me of sea ice, but I figure we got this. We can take this. We, we're, we're just going to rope in the kids. The kids won't be as good as adults, but we don't need them. We just need blockers. We got blockers, all right. We got four scythers to hold the door and a mining bot. Where did I put the mining bot? Hey, we're going to line up over here. We're going to take him in the choke point, and we're going to see how all of these scythers and bots work out as blockers while we use everyone else at the rear, including the kids, to riddle the polar bears full of bullets. We're even going to get Katie's in on this. It is two days off of their of their 18th birthday. So when they turn 18, they become an adult, at which point I want them to have already killed a polar bear. Here they come. We've got 12 polar bears and we've got a good setup here. We've got the tunneler up front with his little shield. It's even got a little built-in 250 shield pack on it, which is kind of nice. No good against polar bears, but still, we've got three scythers, well, two scythers are gonna help it out. And then we've got these two to slot in as backups. In any case, we want, oh, wow. Ew. I'm not seeing anything but assault shots there. Ew, how are you looking? Oh, Scyther Blade, Scyther Blade. Okay, so the Scythers there actually happen in a fair bit. Oh, man. That is pretty much a straight-up slaughter. And then there's just three that wandered off. Uh, I wonder if we should just let the, uh, the Scythers off the leash and let them run them down. I mean, they all look to be injured. Mm. No, 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 you know what? Let, let's let's play this a little bit safer. I've gotten burned recently by trying to do things I should... Oh, wow. Rot stink. Yeah. Uh, that rot stink's going to affect people's lungs. But I suppose the bots help because they're the ones up front tanking the most of it. We're going to let the bots do the talking. Uh, go on and get them. This is so weird being actually rooting for mechanoids. And another one bites the dust, and I think we can start relaxing all the zones and letting everyone out again. Uh, the bots can cart away all that stuff. I am very, very thankful for the bots for this. They're able to carry the corpses all the way over there. The rot stick pollutes that place and so, well, Lunk's fine at this. Lunk's a vamp. They have absolute 100% toxic resistance immunity, so they don't care. Chewbacca, you there yet? And let's see, what do we got? Oh, yeah, we have to sell off a bunch of veggies. They were literally just filling up our fridge so yeah if anyone complaining about me selling potatoes well it's just they don't last as long as the corn also that looks perfect immunity plus one psychically dull oh damn it that is you have a perfect immune system but you're psychically dull that is kind of a kick in the mm. i mean we have to buy it because it's perfect immunity, but uh, I don't really know if I want to put that on someone. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's nice to find it at least. 
Well, we have the poison chalice that is that gene pack, and we picked up a few other bits and bobs, sold off a bunch of stuff, but mainly components, neutronamine, and medicine. We want to be able to make our own medicine, and also maybe get ourselves some panoxicillin. I mean, it's no perfect immunity for everyone, but it's pretty close. Uh, oh. That's not good. Normally I don't mind when our caravan gets ambushed because it's smoky and they're a vampire. Chewbacca's not a vampire. Chewbacca's very fallible. Okay, we got someone with a steel knife. They're a waster. Oh. We don't have anything that will help us, really. Um... Got a shock lance if things go horribly wrong, we could capture them. Do we want any waster genetics? I mean, the only thing really from here I would like would be the pollution stimulus. Maybe psychite dependency and uh, wake up addict. Yeah, I suppose we could just zap them. Tell you what, we'll, we'll make a few preparations just in case, thing, in case things go wrong. I've noticed Lump here is over by this, or Lunk can start repairing that. Then we can. Pop Lunk into the pod if needs be. And if Lunk gets sent over, well, that, that fight's going to go only one way. The Lunk way. You, how you doing? Okay. Never mind. And we get a genetic donor out of this all at the same time. Oh, no medical skill. Barely heard of it. Medical disabled. Hmm. How much time you got left on you again? Five hours. You know what? We might, just might, be able to get you home. See, Lunk, did you finish that? No. Uh, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take them and see if we can. Why not? 0 0.1 of a day to get home. Uh, the pawn we're taking with it. Wow, what's wrong with that one? You've got Plague Extreme. Oh. I don't know if you're going to make it, buddy. Ooh, that was... I have no idea how you came that close and still survived. Oh, wait, of course Chewbacca can tend wounds. I was looking at the wrong pawn. I was looking at our uh, new acquisition. Um, Yeah, someone's going to have to drag them into a prison cell real soon before they try and make a break for it. Well, we went out and grabbed the prisoner, and now it's time. I can, I can actually remember to tell you about the mod I installed, Auto Extract Genes by Nab Nabato? Nabito? What, whatever. It's uh, an extra tick box that's added in under health called Auto extract genes. Now, if we tick that, what will happen is someone will come along and chuck them into the gene extractor. And then once their uh, genes regrowing wears off and they're capable of being chucked back in again, someone will come along and chuck them in again. And they'll just keep doing that. And you can use this to harvest mass amounts of people's genes without having to manually check all the time. Uh, let's assume someone's going to notice. Ah, hospital beds. That's actually nice to have. There's a few, well, they're not terribly important, but they could help us if some of the kids get sick in the future. I'm thinking bionic replacements about now. There's a few bionics I would like to help some of our more uh, invalided pawns out. So why not grab those while we're here? We are... Oh, actually, we've kind of made our way most of the way to the end of the, uh, the tree. We've got access to just about everything good we want. But there are a few extra things I would like, like specialized limbs, compact, there's, there's things. But all the kids are coming online, they're soon all going to be adults, and we'll actually have a full adult team of people doing stuff. Ooh, 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 ooh. One of the kids just became, a, well, technically an adult. They've become 13. They're old enough to do smithing and researching, which I think was the only things they weren't allowed to do, but more importantly, what traits they get? Quick sleeper? Yes. Pyromaniac? Uh, no. Just, just no kind? That could work. Slowpoke, no. Misogynist, no. And Too Smart. Oh, wow. Like, we could put Too Smart on top of Fast Learner, and they would get a 150% learning bonus. That would mean... I think even all their basic skills would act as if they were regular skills. No, we don't want to... Like, we can specialize them more than that. We don't need to care. Can you get shooting? No. So despite having access to, to six shots uh, every time, you never got a single one in shooting. That's kind of frustrating. We'll just have to wait until we can genetically craft something better, aren't you? Hmm. What way were we going to go with Cowgirl? They were supposed to be our, uh... Oh my god. That is uh, a hell of a picture you got going on there, Cowgirl. You were supposed to be our social, uh, freeholder type, everything or other. Hmm. Alright, it's it's gotta be Quick Sleeper. The thing is, Too Smart is wonderful, but... Uh, you normally specialize your pawns anyway, and spreading them too thin is not really worth it. So we'll just grab Quick Sleeper, which is an exit respite multiplier. They spend half as much time sleeping. Just a more productive pawn all around. Uh, when it comes to the traits up here, they are, they are a fast earner. So 
Honestly, doubling up on any skills is kind of pointless, so I just spread it out to all the skills it didn't already have. Artistry, plants, and crafting. They can now do them all. Uh, artistry, plants, crafting. They can... Ooh, they actually have a negative to arts, though. Maybe I should get rid of that one. Hmm. You can always change that genetically if necessary. It's just there's no real point putting them into anything else. I could double down on social, but already we're going to get 175%. That will make it, I think, 100 and, or 225. Yeah, it, not worth it. So yes, KDs will become our, uh, uh, our link with the Empire, while at the same time being hopefully pretty good at stuff. Now, we're about to have all the kids edge up. Lindsay is five days away, which is less than a day in kids' terms. They age six times faster, so it's like it's like dog years, I suppose, they age in. Uh, 11 days for Pepper Silly. Wait, yeah, 11 days for Pepper Silly and Muppet. Well, Muppet's going to be a while longer. And we're probably going to stick Cowgirl in the tank to age them up a little bit more. I mean, why not? Katie's is almost 18. They're actually one day off. Now is a good time to point out why we're sticking these kids in the vats. Uh, we're aging them up as quick as we possibly can. Once they hit 13, their aging slows down to normal. And uh, that's a problem, because their body size remains frozen at 0 0.80, or 80% of a normal human. For example, if we grab, say, Chewy here, they are a 1 for body size. So these kids are just a little bit too small, which causes some problems. Uh, for example, let's go down to global work speed. Uh, multiplier for age. So their age reduces their productivity. General labor speed, it's reduced by their age as well, I believe. What is it? Global processing speed manipulation? Yeah, no, it's not actually listed there for that one. Uh, mining's fine, but a bunch of their skills, well, their global work speed is going to be affected by it anyway, which usually affects just about everything else. So into the tank you go. As well as that, it also affects their drug tolerances, which reminds me, where is Katie's? Katie's is now an adult, so they can go on our social drugs policy. Right, we can also do some things to reduce the, the, the drugs that the kids can take, or the teenagers from 13 to 18, but I'm just not bothered. I think I'm just going to tank them until they hit 18. Oh, that reminds me, Katie, how are you doing on that front? You are a vat-grown child, uh, but you are a tribe member. Only artistic and morbid as a focus. Mm -mm. I hope they fix that sooner rather than later. Though, Katie does look like they've got some pretty good passions going on right there. And next, Lindsay. Let's see what you managed to roll. Trigger happy, always good, beautiful, kind, pyromaniac again. No, thank you, Randy. Jealous and abrasive. So we got trigger happy, beautiful, or kind. Hmm. All good choices. So after a bit of humming and hawing, I went with trigger happy. It's just a straight damage increase. Beautiful is nice for keeping them out of social fights and getting them, well, not keeping them out of social fights, but making people like them. Kind is just... Uh, kind of meh. It's actually a double-edged sword in many ways because it neutralizes beauty. Trigger happy. Just more damage, so why not? In fact, I kind of feel like Randy's pushing us towards more miniguns. Anyway, then when it comes to the skills, I decided to double down on artistic. They're going to be our artist, so yeah, we might as well be a fast learning with a burning passion in artistry. That's going to help. And then I picked animals and social because it's the only thing they didn't have already. And they are well a fast learner, so let's just grab everything we can. They are going to be very flexible. And that's one thing we're going to need because we're going to have five pawns at the end of this Arconexus quest, and all of those five pawns need to be, well, pretty good at starting up a colony again, just like our original five did, but on harder difficulty settings, so, well, 500% threat. But I'm thinking we're immediately going to get ourselves... Oh, wow, I just realized that looked at Lindsay's picture. That looks... like something. Ew. So, Lindsay here is a bit of a problem. Uh, we've made them into our designated... Sculptor person. The problem is... Yeah, they're sleepy. They're gonna spend more time asleep. We're gonna have to get them a masterwork. There's a masterwork bed knocking around here somewhere. I just... Yeah, that one. I think they're gonna get assigned it so they get faster rest effectiveness. But... Ooh, proper silly. Now, you are a nimble brawler. Please give us something that helps with that. Well, being psychopathic might help. <laughs> Sanguine is always good. Slothful, night owl, psychically deaf, chemical fascination. Oh... I mean, I almost kind of have to go with Sanguine. They'd just be so happy about things. Psychopath is kind of good, but, I mean, you can get... We could change things with our religion to not care about that, so... Eh. That's just makes Oh, we definitely get it. We needed a point in melee, especially with them being a slow learner. Would you get social? Yeah, double down on social and construction. I mean, I would have liked tough. I really would have liked tough. I don't think we've seen tough once yet. But this doesn't work out horrible. I mean, it's not a super soldier, but... Uh, 
double, what, one point in melee, uh, double construction, double social, double plants, double animals, and one wasted point in shooting. Yeah, this points out how much of a waste that was. The moment we give them a gun, the brawler trait gives them a minus 10 or a minus 20 or something. I think, I think, yeah, they would be, hmm, we might even give them, a, give them a vampire bite later, just to make them that just, just a little bit better. All right, Pampersilly, you are, wow, your picture looks, um, interesting. We'll get you some clothes, though, and uh, we'll sort you out. And maybe a flak vest. Damn it, I don't have enough cloth, do I? I need to start planting cloth. Damn it. Our little agribot swarm goes and takes care of that and converts all the stuff here to cotton. We've put two tiny little patches right there. Not not really too big, but enough cotton that we can make some more uh, flak vests out of it. Uh, we have also been converting over entirely to toxify generators. We're going to go full toxic. That will be ten generators. Uh, each one will be generating about... Oh, actually, what's this cost? Yeah, it's a 1300 watts of piece. So, yes, uh, that should generate her, or the, all of our power needs for the near and reasonable future. So, 1580 steel, and I'm thinking it's time we started getting into the vampire stuff. Yeah, death rest caskets are the way to go. So, we'll put you there. Um, We're going to need one for each. And what was that? Devil Strand Pants. Well, yeah. Oh, and there's the marriage on. Uh, Chewbacca and Stalker are basically going to get married at some point in the near future. Okay, first thing we want to do is we want to stick on, like, there's several things you can do. Death Rest Accelerator, Hemo Pump, Hemogen Amplifier, Glucozoid Pump, and Psycho Fluid. Let's just go with Death Rest Accelerator. Very simple, easy to use. You chuck that down right beside it, and what that will mean is it will speed up how long it takes our vamps to rest up. As in, they won't need as much sleep. With one of them, I believe it cuts it down to about three days or three and a quarter days. With two of them, which is the maximum amount you can have, and who botched that? Uh, I probably should be more careful. But um, with two of them, you can drop it down to 2.5 days, and two is the maximum amount you're allowed to have. In fact, if we check under here, you'll see death rest connection limit two. So you can only have two of them attached to each casket. Can't share them. Each one is uh, tied directly to a casket, and that's it. And oh my god, it's a poor casket. I don't think that matters, does it? Oh, actually, it does. Never mind. We're going to get our best crafter to make the death rest casket. Ryan, thank you. That's a good death rest casket. Increases rest effectiveness. Excellent. And a little bit of surgery success chance does not hurt. And then we'll get the death rest accelerator chucked down here. However, that costs 800 watts. That's a lot of power. And two of them are 1600 watts, which is why we expanded this all the way down here. Just to uh, give ourselves enough power to run these, because we're going to need two. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, we'll see here, everyone's got a death rest limit, so zero of one is what this crowd have. As in, to they can only hook up to one building. So this is the only building they can hook up to for now. However, we can improve upon that if we buy some death rest serums or whatever the hell they are. We're going to be doing a bunch of shopping soon, so I hopefully by the time Smokey's finished their, uh, their next shopping spree, which... Oh, Never mind, we can wake you up. There is an auto wake up button, but uh, I tend to keep them awake for too long. Smokey's going to grab their gear and then we're going on a shopping spree. Before we send Smokey on their way, we should probably begin a linking ritual here for Lunk. And uh, Lunk could do it, but need 20 anima grass. Damn it. We did have 20 anima grass. Did one just die? Oh, damn it, I was too slow. Okay, once that hits 20, then we'll send uh, Smokey on their way. It's about time Lunk started getting their side cast levels up. That way we have two caster vampires. Uh, I'd really love to get Stalker up as well. I'd love to have a, ca a caster mechanoid vampire. Oh, that actually might be. No, later, later. We've got to try and like do our shopping sprees once Lunk's uh, leveled up. We'll send Smokey on their way. And we've got Word of Joy. So basically I've been keeping people happy if things go really badly wrong. And we got four anime grass out of the ritual. So yeah, exit. We would be nice if we could get a few more participants, but, you know, our newbies aren't actually classified as tribal for some reason, despite their parents being full practitioners. I'll look into mods on that later. Well, this is where we get our hands on Death Rest Capacity Serum. They seem reasonably common. It's most of the places actually stock one of them. And this allows you to increase the amount of things you're able to link up to your coffins, which is handy. Uh, we also got the gene for Wimpy. We're probably going to want that for some prisoners we genetically engineer later, but... Honestly, I'm not even sure it's worth the effort, but we'll take it back anyway. It's not really a bad thing. And another wall raise. I think wall raise has saved my bacon too many times for me not to pick it up, especially since we're playing a non-kill box run. Very, very useful. All right, let's get everyone back up to speed and ooh, let's make sure everyone's got wall raise on them that can. And disease plague. Ah, 
should I make the panoxicillin now, or you know what, I, no, we, we're safe for another 30 days or 20 days from it now, so we'll just have to deal with it with normal meds. Ooh, I just realized it's uh, time to send Nosbos back, his uh, shuttle has arrived, we have three days to get them on board. So I think we grab Kauger and we do their quest. Where is it? Kauger's Yeoman Ceremony. Uh, to give me the map clear of enemies of the Bastor's faction. Well, who's the enemies that are left? Probably this trade group, are they? And it's the, right, the Southwestern Eslers or whatever the hell. Yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh, we'll just stick stick them back in the tank. People can uh, feed them up and we'll just l put this guy back on his shuttle home. It just means that we miss out on a few points for uh, Kagger. Heat wave time. Now in the past it used to be the animals would evacuate the map the moment a heat wave kicked in, so I'm going to be a little bit careful here and maybe stock up the fridge before we go. Let's do a quick drafted hunt. Yeah. We're going to need meat for the fridge. I think we got most of them, plus a few alpacas and a bunch of animals around the corner. That should keep our fridge well stocked up until the heat wave passes. Oh, and Peter. Poor Peter, our, uh, our starting animal. We're going to have to do something about them. Otherwise, when they die, they're going to make Smokey very unhappy. The heat wave lo looks to have driven off the traders. We might be able to just squeeze this out. Uh, Kagura's yeoman ceremony. You need to be you need Kagura to be in your home colony. Well, they are. They're just in a tank. Second, we'll cancel their vat grow for a second. Yeah, there you go. This should hopefully get us a few points uh, when we promote them, and then we can get another few points when we promote them a second time. Yeah, just we can start the bestowing ceremony, and we'll have it in the kitchen because, of course, we will. Uh, the reason we want to do this is we should be able to couple of get a couple of bonus honor points out of doing this. If we don't do it now, we'll end up skipping the entire uh, yeoman ceremony and going straight to acolyte, which means we'll lose out on a few points. So why not? Take what we can get, and this will leave us with two levels with the Empire on Cowger. There we go. Honor honorable dispo ah. honorable bestowing ceremony and receive two honor as a sign of respect. Uh, yeoman title gained. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Quest available. Cowger's acolyte ceremony. Well, exit. Uh, we need to get them a throne first. Uh, that's grand. Actually, doesn't really make a difference. They're on what? Seven points? Yeah, they get 8, 9, 10 for getting Nuzbos out of here, so why don't we do that? Uh, Smokey, carry them to this shuttle. Need to get them out of here. Hey, we should probably put some shuttle landing pads out there. Ah, too much effort. And with that one done... Quest completed. Kagger gains a few more points. Soon we'll have a knight, and then we can finally trade with the Empire. Peter has started having a heart attack. I would prefer them not to do that. Damon, if you could please. You have incredibly good medical. Oh, seriously? Come on. Stop failing. You know, I'd prefer if they didn't die. Statistically speaking, you've got to actually succeed at some point, right? Come on. Okay, now I'm thinking, hmm, I'm thinking Peter needs to leave the map right now. Uh, we already just sent a caravan off, but yeah, Smokey's on their way over there. I think it's time we got, we, uh, that old yeller go. Peter and Damon have left the world map there, or left onto the world map. Uh, this is, this is something I don't like doing, but it's just the most efficient way to do things. We're gonna banish Damon. I mean, I don't like, or we're gonna banish Peter. I don't like doing it. The thing is, they've been a loyal dog, fox, whatever. And I mean, they helped tank for us. They they got lots of injuries because of it, and they're old. And they're, they're at some point they're gonna die. Problem is, when they die, uh, their owner will get a minus what is it? Minus eight for twenty days when they die. A minus eight mood penalty, which is pretty bad. But if we banish them, they get a minus six for six days. So they get less mood penalty for six days. Um, yeah, that's that feels wrong. I would actually prefer to, you know, put them down and put them out of their misery instead of releasing them into the wild like that, but it just seems that's the way the game is coded, so that's what we're stuck with. Oh, yes, you could also sell them to someone, That's the, or uh, you could release them, as in you can select one of these animals and release them back into the wild and they'll just hang out outside your base for a while and then maybe run away. 
that, that gives you minus five for 15 days, which is still, you know, longer than the minus six for six days. Or even worse, you could sell them. You could sell them to a trader and that would give you a minus 10 for a year. Selling them, as opposed to killing them, banishing them, or releasing them into the wild gives you worse. I, I don't know why. Okay, caravan has arrived and we've got a excellent pigskin duster. I was trying to see, but it doesn't seem like Smokey was the uh, the owner of that pet. I don't know who was bonded with it, but it doesn't matter now. They really should not have a... I hate having attack there. That's like just one misclick away from disaster. They should really have like a are you sure thing. Let's see what we got. Oh, no death rest serums. Hmm. And the gene pack for blue. Well, this was a dud. Anyway, what good are all those death rest serums that we're trying to obtain? Well, let's grab Lunk here and get him to ingest this death rest serum we picked up earlier. If you see down here, it says building zero of one. We ingest this and now it's up to buildings zero of two. That means they can connect to two buildings to get bonuses while they're doing their death rest sleep. And normally it lasts four days with these two and with that potion in, in them, they can now sleep for about 2.5 and they're finished with their death rest. And that's just the start of the bonuses. We'll see how much more death rest serums we can get, but we're going to make sure that the next time Lunk goes to sleep, they're going to wake up better, faster, stronger. Now, unfortunately, most of the... Huh, met peacefully. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, unfortunately, most of these places around here, we've, we've already been to all of them. I mean, they're all tapped out. But I've just remembered, we never actually, when we were passing through these three places... We never checked them for death rest serums. Well, I didn't want them at the time, but I think we'll have a quick gander back through them before their inventory is reset. And if we can pick up a death rest serum or three, I would be quite happy. Uh, also, one of them has a learning enhancer according to the comments, and that might be good for Papper Silly. Uh, they do have that slow learner trait going on, so maybe we'll dose them up would be nice. Also, yeah, we've got a, a bunch of genes for recombining we can do later, but... No, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I want, I want to get even more genes stored up. I want to have a nice big bank so we can do some really fun stuff. Ah, bionic replacements, my old friend. You look absolutely delicious right now. There's also this new toxin filtration. We now have artificial kidneys and lungs. Lose a kidney? Don't have to go source them anymore. You can just build a t detoxifier kidney. Not only gives you a kidney, allows you to uh, detoxify yourself at 50% rate, I think like that. So it's like 50% toxin resistance, which normally can you get from genetics. And this is toxic environmental resistance built into your lungs. These are really nice. I mean, I do want to play around with those, but maybe not just yet. I think we're going to need a long range mineral scanner. I've been trying to source some plasteel, but we're out. And because we're out of plasteel, we can't build more bots. We could afford one more scyther so we could go up to six, which I really want. But we can't just yet because we don't have any plasteel on the map and... This has not found us enough. We've got plenty of steel. This is really what you want it for, steel, but silver's over here. We've got some jade, and then there's some other batches around the place, uranium, and I think, yeah, more uranium. We want to get our hands on plasteel, and I think the long-range mineral scanner might be our best bet for that. Plus, we have a tunneler to go take care of it. I think that's the reason the tunneler exists now. This thing you can send out on those sort of long-range mineral scanner missions, and it's got massive carry capacity to bring back the minerals you, you get. I think that was the plan, but we'll find out. We'll give it a go. Oh, and our trade caravan has reached this location. And no death rest serums. We did find a second death rest serum at the other place and a learning assistant, but... No, ooh, I am tempted by nuclear stomachs these days. Lindsay here is going to be a hell of an artist rather quickly. Because of the burning passion combined with Fast Learner, they max out their learning every day. They're getting 4,000 experience at sculpting every day, as long as we keep them sculpting. Uh, I think we should be able to get ourselves some good excellent statues pretty soon. Uh, Ryan has created a pigskin duster. Oh, thank you, Ryan. We have so many masterwork dusters around. It's ridiculous. It kills off all the potential fun text dialogues you could get. Like, you know, the ones that say, oh, someone getting shot or all those events. We have so many events inscribed on clothing that we sell that, yeah, all the legendary and masterworks just have generic events after a while. Well, Lunk is back. Sorry, Smokey's back. And Lunk's about to get a couple more death rest serums uh, in just, yeah, that's four. Okay, so you're up to four capacity. That means they can link to four buildings attached to their casket. I don't know why this is, but we want, I think, the glucozoid one? Yep, yeah, this is the speed bonus one. Yeah, it's going to cost us 150 steel and six components, plus five blood packs, I think, every time we use it. Let's just do two of those. Yeah, this is interesting. This means after they're finished their death rest, they get a glucozoid rush, which gives them 112% movement speed. And this stacks, also as well as that, you can build four of them. Now, of course, we need to get some more serums so that we could link up to more of them. But in theory, you could build four of these 
and you would get about a 50% movement bonus almost. So a vampire that can run almost 50% faster. Oh, and Lunk has a... Uh, oh, we got a logging site nearby. Yeah, I don't care. Though I need, really need to get my hands on more prisoners for gene extraction. Preferably a bunch of hussars, but they're really hard to get. You can't shock lance hussars because they're psychically immune. They're psychically deaf, all of them. So capturing them means you just sort of have to, like, deleg them or something. Uh, maybe gas poisoning? You know, is there anything... like? Oh, even heat stroking them might be an option. Yeah, they got partial antitoxic lungs, so even uh, causing them to collapse from toxins might be difficult. Hmm, an exotic goods shredder has wandered by. We're selling actually, selling off a couple of the genes we got duplicates of. They're not actually terribly bad, like 176 bucks for a gene, and you can just keep extracting those from prisoners. Assuming you can keep the prisoners cheaply. Oh no, it's still not worth it, you still gotta feed the meals. It's, uh, it's not really a money spinner in my opinion. But we did manage to get our hands on tox immunity, total antitoxic lungs. This would be nice, though I'm not sure I want it anymore, considering I now know that the existence of, where is it, they've actually gone here, detoxifier lungs. So a couple of detoxifier lungs, which you can just build out of technology and build into your pawns. I'm going to have to investigate if there's any negatives to having those, like if your EMP, uh, if, if it gives you an EMP problem or something like that. But interesting to know, we'll, we'll, we'll take the gene anyway, along with all of that other stuff. This is... Um, it's interesting the shopping you're going to end up doing now that they've introduced all of this stuff because, like, this is our recombiner right now. Uh, I'll probably do up a test one at some point just to show you what we can achieve. But for now, um, yeah, for now things are looking pretty good. And in three more days, well, a half day really, you know, kids go at dog years or something. So at about a half day's time, Muppet will uh, hit a milestone. They'll be age 10, which means they'll only be three years off their final uh, or becoming an adult. Once Muppets aged up to 13, we're going to start breeding five more children. Then once we've got them up to three years of age in the vats, we'll decant them and grow another five children. So we'll be raising 10 children simultaneously. It should be an interesting mess. But I think we've almost got enough firepower now that we're we're pretty solid. Though, should we convert Pepper Silly into a vamp? Now the thing is, they're currently in the tank. I want to wait until they're 18 before we decant them. The reason being, once they're 18, they actually have full body size, and it gives them a few bonuses in close combat, which we would prefer to have. So, and since they're going to be, well, doing a lot of melee stuff, uh, it might be good to have them as 18. And as a vampire, they'd get a bit of a melee bonus and a few other bits and bobs. I mean, okay, they get that fire fear, but, you know, being able to bound about the map and kill things, just like their old man, might be a good idea. All right, Muppet, let's see what kind of skills you've got. You're already a quick sleeper, which, yeah, that's pretty good. You're weak immunity, aggressive, pollution stimulus, and poor autistic. But you do have fire spew, so, you know, it's not all horribly bad. Let's see what you got. Fast walker, too smart, misandrist, kind, iron-willed, or night owl. Eek. I mean, like, Fast Walker just jumps out there. Too Smart's also good. Iron Willed, it had to be. It's just that's such a nice... It keeps the pawn from ever having a mental break. It's almost impossible once you've got Iron Willed on top of them. Plus, if Too Smart shows up in the next round, we might be tempted to pick that because uh, we wouldn't have to worry about the mental break threshold at all then. In fact, there's a few things that might come up that this would help counteract, so Iron Willed is just generally a good all-rounder to have. At the same time, I went with Mining, Melee, and Intellectual. Melee because, well, I want everyone to be good at at least shooting and melee if possible. Having good fighters is what we're going to need if we don't have a kill box. As well as that, Mining because we need more of them, and Intellectual because I've realised I didn't make any of our newer ones Intellectual, and it'd be good to have a scientist at some point. Anyway, that sorts them out for now. Um, Muppet's going to have one more growth level, and then that will be the, the first batch of kids completed. I am really looking forward to that. I really wish Randy would just, you know, send some humans at us. I am I am ready to just prison up a whole bunch of people. We've got our nutrient paste dispenser. I've got all the beds down. I just want to jam this place full of hussars, yatkins, neanderthals, wasters, and just rip all the genes out of them all day long. But it's freaking mechanoids again. Okay, we've got a mechanoid cluster inbound. Uh, where is it headed? Uh, slow that way. Oh, God. Why do I feel like this is going to have a mortar in it? Please don't have a mortar. Well, we've got a centipede. Uh, what are we looking like? What are we looking like? It is a climate adjuster. Minus 10 to the temperatures. In summertime? Oh, wait, no. We're coming into September, so... Eh, get into the fall. But still, not exactly death stuff. Hmm. Yeah, we need a plan. So, sticking with past theme themes, uh, this is not going to be that complicated a plan. Uh, Smokey's here, they've got their invisibility, they're going to apply it to themselves. That is perfect, then I'm going to get them to maybe take a few pot shots at that unstable power cell. Oh, seriously? 
Okay, perfect. That's woken up a bunch of them. Now that is good for us. I want you to Psychic Insanity that one at the back. It's got a Centipede Blaster thing. Oh, damn it. Did you lose sight? No. One down. And then let's take that one as well. Uh, how are we looking on the invisibility? Eight seconds. Right. Then it's time to run. <laughs> That's two insane centipedes and us getting the hell out of town. Uh, let's let's go this day, shall we? No, 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 no. Cancel that. We, we want to jump as far as we possibly can. Okay. Still not far enough. Uh, jump some more. That invisibility is going to wear off soon. And they have good aims. And long jump again, I'm thinking. Yeah. Perfect. How are you looking? You're far away. You are, ooh, you're actually in range already. Okay, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to long jump again. I know we're chewing through your blood supplies, but it's okay. We've got plenty of uh, juice boxes back home for you. Right. I was kind of hoping they tipped it on stable power cell. I don't really mind if you lose one on stable power cell, but I definitely, definitely want to keep at least a couple of these power cells for some plans I have much, much, much later. All right. What are we dealing with here? we got five scythers. Ooh. I was hoping they wouldn't have too many scythers. And they've got four pikemen. And then centipede-wise, was it? We're looking at... Damn it. it. won't select all the centipedes. Never mind. Okay, so one, two, three, four... Oh, but three or four centipedes that we'll have to deal with. And then we got this crowd down here that are heading straight for us. All right. Uh, I say we get everyone inside. Uh, get them set up here. We're going to use some low shield pops. Probably... Actually, let's go meet them in the field. We've got enough long-range gunners. And we've also got a bunch of scythers. Well, let's get our field combat on, shall we? We have summoned all of our team over here. Well, except for Muppet. Muppet's a kid. But everyone else is lined up here. Oh, and Pepper City. They're still aging up. And we've even got our Scythers here, and the Tunneler is slowly crawling over. Now, everyone should be taking a bead on that Lancer the moment it comes in range. And they should be riddling it full of bullets. Seriously? 35%. Well, how much damage you done to it? Okay, its sight is still perfect. Its manipulation is way down. Oh my god, do not let it get off another round. Okay, thank you. I was really worried that we were going to let that one get off a second round. Uh, over here, they've started to fire. There's, ooh, the Scythers are on their way. The Lancer is slowly making it down. Pikeman. And then they've got a few of the centipedes. You know what? No, it turns out you can't select all of them at the same time now. Well, they've got three centipedes here that we can take care of. Um, so all we really got to worry about now is this one early centipede and this pikeman. Pikeman, unfortunately, we're going to have to surprise. We can't have that getting too close to us, so we'll let that come around the corner. And then when his head comes around the corner, we'll put bullets in its head. Come on, Pikeman. I think we can just swamp this thing. Uh, we don't even have to worry too much about our people getting caught in friendly fire. Uh, Chewbacca can go there. Lunk, you know, we're going to hold you back. Or actually, we'll stick you right there. Stalker, we want you up front so that you're close enough to give support, but not so close that you're risking anything. Uh, there is good. Damn it. He's drawing a bead. Okay, perfect. Pull back, pull back, pull back. No point getting involved in that. Okay, then. Uh, I will let you off the leash. You can also be let off the leash. Uh, thankfully, our bots are immune to fire. Uh, Lunk, however, is terrified of fire. That's sort of frustrating and hilarious all at the same time. Okay, another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. Uh, Lunk, where did you go? Buddy. Get back here. Uh, Smokey. I need you to get your skip on. Oh, you know... You need to have a an eyeball on them, don't you? Perfect. There we go. Hey, guys. What are you doing? No! Shouldn't you be, like, defending? Excellent. Those scythers make wonderful meat shields. That is beautiful.
beautiful. And now, we just gotta take care of the rest of them, which should be pretty handy. We'll lower in the long-range units by bringing everyone back inside. And then we'll just bring them all- I really should set up a better area, but no. It's a no-kill box run, so we're not gonna set up a kill box. This just happens to be a convenient location. Ow. Hmm. Eh, Smokey, get over here if you don't mind. Come on, come on. Everyone out of the way. Oh, one of our scythers is down. Actually, that's okay. It's fine. What they're meant to be for. What are you shooting at? Ah, uh, guys. I'm going to put the agri hands back inside, otherwise they're just going to cause issues. Agri hands are on their way back in, and we're going to start swarming down on this crowd. Uh, I think, yeah, we'll send the scythers and stuff out first. We can send these guys back to get in some beads on this crowd. Uh, hmm. Smokey, where are you? I'm going to need some skipping going on. Dear Lord, we have so many abilities here, it's just mental. Uh, you need to go back Oh, there, I'd say. That should save us a bunch of hassle. And that's another one dead. Perfect. Okay, that Scyther needs to... Yeah, I can't go out of command range, damn it. That is the only downside of these mechs. And uh, you guys can all actually attack that. Lunk. Get in there. Actually. Lunk. Time you did a little bit of long jumping. Right there is fine. Perfect. So, these guys are targeting the pikeman, Lunk is targeting that centipede, and all of our other centipedes are targeting that guy. That's actually pretty nicely done. And the rest of you line up there. Yeah, I think you're going to beat Lunk to the killing of the centipede, but that's fine. Uh, Lunk is about to get blasted by a minigun. Lunk's wearing a shield belt. Lunk doesn't care. Probably. Uh, you, what's your radius? Perfect. All of you get to there. Everyone get out behind them. Actually, Lunk's shield is not only holding, uh, the blast from the, uh, the centipede over there actually damaged the other centipede. So, friendly fire for the win. Okay. Okay, now that guy's locked up in close combat. Perfect! These... I like that the new bots we get can do this. It makes it so much simpler. Uh, how's Lunk doing? Ooh. Okay, lost it. Those fingers were gone before. We got you a bionic leg, so it's grand, and you're kicking the snot out of that guy, so it's okay. And... come on, seriously? God, those things are so tough. And then everyone can get over here and help out Lunk. Not that Lunk needs the help, but let's just speed these things along, shall we? Uh, that went quite well. Like, bearing in mind, we faced these in the field, we didn't use a kill box like we said we wouldn't, and we still managed to slaughter them quite handily. True, there's lots of injuries, but it's all relegated to the bots and Lunk. And Lunk's a fast healer. He'll be grand. That means all we have to do now is go and clean this mess up. Uh, smoke launcher and... yeah, this is what... Centipede blaster some one day. We get a smoke launcher, some grenades, we pop over here, we can clean up this me mess lickety split, and what do we got? Four unstable power cells. Hell yeah. I'm gonna call that a win. Oh, one thing. Uh, this gene stuff, I would really like to go into more detail in this, but this is probably going to be a longer explanation in another episode. But let's just take this thing, this archite metabolism thing. This is basically three points. So if we select that, we get plus four metabolic efficiency, as in our hunger rate goes to 60%. In other words, you've got 40% more efficient. However, if you were to, say, put on something that required things like, oh, I don't know, give me super fast wound healing, our hunger rate, our metabolic efficiency gets minus three and goes up by 75%. So what happens is, if you are at 100% metabolic efficiency, which is zero points, you're perfectly fine. If you go one point above it, it costs you 25% more food every time for that pawn if you give them those genes. And if you go one point below it, it costs you 10% less food. So the perfect medium to be is at a zero of metabolic efficiency. So this gives us a bunch of free points to work around with, and we were very lucky to find that, we'll admit. Uh, so let's just say we've grabbed that, 
Then we spent three points on this. Total anti-toxic lung, which is probably 90%, and then one point on elongated fingers, which gives us a 10% bonus to manipulation. So we could take this, uh, start combining it. We need to do a few other things uh, that we can purchase and build and all that. But assuming we just made this genetic package, we could apply this to any of our pawns and it would give them fire resistance, a pig nose, um, total anti-toxic lungs, meaning we would be completely immune to toxic fallout, gas stuff and all that. And they would have a 10% manipulation bonus. And we could apply that to anyone. As in, we could take, say, Chewy here, and we could apply that on top of all their other stats. So it'd go in here under Xenogenes. Would not affect these germline genes. Germline genes are what they're going to keep and their, and their kids might get passed on. The Xenogenes are the ones that they just, you kind of like paste them on top and they should take dominance. So then Chewbacca, on top of all these other stats, would also be immune to toxicness and would be massively fire resistant and would have 10% manipulation bonus. And we could apply that to everyone except for our vamps. You see, vamps are not really vampires in a way. They're just a whole bunch of uh, xenogenes all tacked on. Like, ah, see, they've got the archite metabolism as well. This is basically just a very put together, it's like someone got their hands on a huge amount of genes and basically built a, a sort of vampire out of it. We could also do that. If we spend enough time, we could find all of these genetics, patch them all together and make a vampire gene if we wanted. And we could even tweak it slightly, get rid of the fire phobia and the tinder skin and do some other stuff. We'd have to make some changes, but we could make this just slightly better. And that would be sort of a hugely beautiful thing if we could arrange it. But that, that will be for another episode. For now, I think we did pretty good today. Ooh. Also, I am looking forward to getting uh, Smokey in this. One smoke, oh, not smoky, actually, lunk. We're going to assign a lunk to this one. This is, this is totally a lunk one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lunk's going to end up in here. When they come out, they're going to be even faster, meaning they can run down their enemies even quicker with their bionic legs. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff we can do with these death rest casks, but that, that's going to have to wait as well. The thing is, we need lots of trade partners, and that's why we, this is one of the reasons we situated here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in fact, ten. We have ten people we've been trading with so far. Once we get good with the Empire, that'll be eleven, and I might even go as far as twelve and thirteen. There's, we want to trade as much as possible to get all of the uh, the death rest casket stuff for our vamps, all of the genes we possibly can for this gene thing. We're going to be able to make, we want to make five super children that can go it through the quest onto the next level and just like dominate stuff and quickly get back to this level again and get even more genes. Oh, but that's that that's that's for another episode. For now, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. <laughs>